Old Norse sagas tell of great dragon ships used by chieftains and kings in the Leidang, the Norwegian attack and defence fleet. Such a dragon ship is now being recreated on this tiny island outside Haugesund in western Norway. The Vikings built ships using their practical experience. Modern authorities require working drawings, but these drawings are constantly being changed during the construction process. The keel is stretched, and we have put templates for the stern and the dragon head. Ola uses an angle board to control the angle of the garboard strake. Gunnar is working with the lot. A lot is the curved transition between the straight keel and the stem and the stern. Ola planes the upper section of the stern. Arnatea works with one of the curved hood end boards that will start off the fourth strake by the stern. Gunnar is marking off for the support blocks of the bottom bands. In a clinker built ship the frames are not begun until after the first few strakes are in place. Each board is adjusted to provide the desired tough and flexible shape of the hull. The frames are added at critical points in order to balance all aspects of the ship. Note the curved hood end boards closest to the stem and the stern. The shape of these hood ends is important for the ship's seagoing qualities. Ola has lubricated the joint between the two sections of the stern with tar. He places hemp as a sealant in the tar joint. This is done in all joints as well as between the overlapping boards in the strakes. Time for the two sections of the stern to meet. Arnatea carefully guides the huge oak stern section to the keel while Ola controls the overhead lift. The two sections are forced together with large clamps. They are attached with large iron rivets. Gunnar is working with the planking. He cuts the nail by the rove to make it ready for clinking. The clinking can start. Approximately 100 hammer strokes are needed on each nail. It is this process that has created the name clinker built ships. Erstein places a new board in the eighth strake. Many wood clamps are used to force the overlapping boards together before clinking. Erstein drills holes for the iron nails. The iron nails are put in place from outside the hull and roves are put on the nails from the inside. The iron nails are hammered through the boards. Erstein pushes from the inside with a dolly to force the rove down the nail. The eighth strake is almost finished. When the ninth strake is in place, the ship's bottom is also finished. These first nine strakes will arch out over the keel. The next 13 strakes and the gunwale will make the ship grow more in height. Working with the lower ribs. The ribs are attached with wooden nails as they are placed in the ship. One must be very accurate when the ribs are fitted. If the shape of the hull is to be retained, the ribs must be customised to the strakes, not the other way round. To ensure the forces acting on the hull are evenly distributed, it is also important that the contact surfaces between the ribs and the support blocks and the strakes are smooth. Lars and Stefan are working with one of the bottom bands. There are many individual surfaces to adjust.
the 17th strake is mounted. Underneath this strake you can see the stringer. This is the reinforcing board on the inside of the ship. Wood clamps are used to hold the boards together. This prevents them from backing away from each other while we drill the pilot holes for their iron nails. Ina adjusts the first of the special hood end boards that are going to join several strakes in the bow. Fitting them entails massive amounts of measuring and tweaking. Ina calls for a practical seminar to discuss details. The shape and strength of the special hood end boards are crucial for the ship's seaworthiness. Ola uses an axe to prepare the stern post for the next special hood end that is going to join the upper strakes. Then he uses a chisel. Here the boat builders are working with the 18th strake. Anatolia does the initial testing of one of the standing knees for one of the five great room braces. The standing knees must be shaped and fitted to the hull, the stringer and the cross braces. The upper stringer is mounted. This stringer is made in two pieces and will be scarfed together in the middle. The stringer highlights a smooth line in the ship, but its real function is to spread the forces working along the length of the hull and to distribute the pressure from the cross braces. We use wood clamps and slowly press it into place. The stringer is attached to the planking with wooden nails. The nails are then cut. And wedges are driven into the wooden nails. The wood carvers have arrived. They are picking out wood suitable for the dragon's tail and head. A root of oak is chosen for being the main block of the dragon's head. The head will be composed of several parts. Wood carver Bonivik uses a projector to explain the template of the dragon's head. One of the midship stringers is hoisted on board. The midship stringers are countersunk over the cross braces. They give the boat longitudinal strength. The dragon is trapped inside large scaffolding. No danger that it will escape. From the top of the scaffolding, it is possible to get an overview. The old haul board is almost finished. Pedder has lubricated a new board with tar. On top of the tar he puts a string of hemp. This will act as a sealant between the strakes. The boards are brought together so that they overlap. Working with the midship stringers. They are fitted with rabbits over the cross braces to lock everything together in a strong, stable unit. A flexible ship is advantageous, but the amount of flex must be kept within reasonable limits. Too much movement puts powerful strains on the longitudinal bracing. We counteract this by spreading the load over a number of braces. A standing knee is mounted. Here the toe is clenched to the cross braces with iron nails. Wooden nails are used to fasten the knee to the planking. Jon is working with one of the standing knees in the bow. In the foreship, six of these will reach up over the gunwale and become bollards for mooring. Ten boat builders have been working on the Dragon for over 20 months to get to this stage. They are using the old Norwegian clinker building technique that can be traced back to the Viking Age. Dragon Harold Fairhair has reached full freeboard. The dragon is 35 metres long and about 7.5 metres wide. We will need a crew of 100 men to row the ship. It will be launched in June 2012.